Welcome to a new episode of Let's Code a Linux Network Driver. So in my last video we accomplished to receive an interrupt from our simple SPI Ethernet device. And in a network driver you need interrupts because for example if a package is received the networking device will send an interrupt. If a package was transmitted successfully the device will send an interrupt. And therefore it is essential for our driver to handle interrupts. So let's open up the source file for our driver and let's see what we have implemented here. So basically here we have installed an interrupt service routine and we were able to see this print. But the thing is because we have different inter so we have different sources for the interrupts, we need to read back the reason for the interrupt. So for example, if the interrupt reason is that a package was transmitted successfully or that a package was transceived. And therefore we were using this set write eight read eight function which will access the SBI bus and write one byte out of the bus and read one byte back and this would give us the reason for the interrupt basically. But the thing is when we are comment or when we are removing this comment, compile the driver and installed it and triggered the interrupt, um, our kernel aborted. So our kernel crashed. We were no longer able to log into the system over SSH, it just hanged. And the reason for this is because we were trying to use a sleep function within an atomic context. So you have to know in the Linux kernel you basically have two contexts available. The first one is the process context. So the process context, for example, is the context in which a probe or a remove function is executed or a system call is executed. So normally these functions are triggered by user space in some way and here it is allowed to use sleep functions. But there is also the atomic context and the best example for an atomic context is an interrupt and in an interrupt you are not allowed to use sleep functions. And the reason for this is because you want to avoid a deadlock. So you want to avoid that your kernel stays in this interrupt function forever, for example, and therefore is causing um, the whole system to hang. So in an atomic context, you should leave this context as quick as possible and do only what is really, really necessary. And the thing is, what we were doing here is we were calling this function, which then calls this set read write function, and this set read write function, we were using the SBI write function. Then we are using a directly sleep function, which is not allowed in an atomic context. And then we were using the SBI read function. And when I take a look at this SBI write function, so here I have the Linux kernel sources available. Here is this SBI write function, which we are using. And here we have the following warning. Context can sleep callable only from context that can sleep. So we are not allowed to use this function in an atomic context. But how can we read back the, um, our interrupt status in our interrupt service routine when this is in an atomic context? Well, the solution is we have to switch to a process context and in this process context we can then um, execute this SBI read and or functions which requires to be able to sleep. And the way of doing this is by using a so-called working queue. So with a work queue we can tell the kernel, hey I have a function which should be executed, please schedule it in the scheduler and then run it in the normal process context. And that's exactly what we will do in today's video. So I will show you how to use work items within the Linux kernel or Linux driver. So the first thing we need is we need to include one more header file. So we need to include linux slash work q.h. And here in this struct set net where I have all the um, variables and pointers required for my um, simple SBI Ethernet device driver, I will create a new um, yeah, object from the type um, work struct and this I will call IRQ work. Okay, then the next thing I need to do is I need to create a new function. 
which has return value or which has no return value and I will call it set IRQ work handler. And this function has one argument from the type struct work struct and this is basically a pointer to our work item and over this pointer we can retrieve the other data of this device. Okay, so here I will declare a struct from the type setNet, I will call priv and this is a container of the pointer which was passed here. And then the struct is called setNet which we want to search for and the last argument is the name of the field we're interested in. This is IRQ work. Okay, and what we can do now here is let's print something out by using dev info. SBI dev IRQ work handler it's running, for example. And then, or maybe let's do it a little bit differently. Here I will call a response and I will set this to set write 8 read 8. And here I will just, the command is 8 for read back the interrupt status. And here let's print this value out. Okay, and that's it. So how can we call this work, this function here, in a, or how can we schedule that this function here will be called in a process context? Well, therefore I have to use the function schedule work. And here I just have to say I want to schedule the function which is associated with the IRQ work struct. Okay, but this struct I haven't set up yet and this is something I have to do within the probe function. So in here, after allocating the data here, I will call init work. I want to initialize the object in my priv irq work and the function which should be called the set irq work handler. Okay. So that should be basically it. Let me try to compile this program and let's see how much mistakes I made. Ah, yes, okay. So here in our work handler, the argument here, I just have to pass priv and not priv SPI. That was the error here. Okay, let's try it again. Now it's looking good. So let me fire up Tmux to spawn a second window here. Here we'll just follow the kernel's lock. Then I will apply my device tree overlay for my simple SPI Ethernet device. And then I can load the driver. And we can see here um, in the prop function we are using an IRQ test function which will just pull the interrupt pin of our SPI device high so we can test if interrupts are working and then here we can see our IRQ function is or I, our IRQ handler is called and this handler will then schedule our work item and here in the work item we could successfully read out the interrupt flags but in this case the interrupt flags is zero because there will be only flags set when a package is trans, um, transmitted or received and none of this is the case so the IRQ flag is zero which is correct. And if I remove the driver again and reload it we can see the interrupt is triggered for a second time and after triggering the interrupt our IRQ work handler will be executed. Cool, so that's how to use um, yeah, functions which can sleep or how to use uh, work handler to start a function from an atomic context or a function which needs um, 
process context in which needs to use sleep functions. Okay, that's for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash So thanks for watching and goodbye.